it's not easy making a good video game villain. You can't just give someone a skull for a hat and call it a day. Well, unless you're Mortal Kombat. <laughs> That's why many video games choose instead to just base their villains on real people, which also has the added bonus of letting them lampoon public figures, play off their public perception, or just air specific grievances against the people their characters are based on. But don't take our word for it, here are seven video game villains who are super obviously based on real people. Uh, enjoy, uh, but do beware spoilers for the following games. In Mirror's Edge Catalyst, the sequel to stylish parkour em up Mirror's Edge, you once again take on the role of Faith, freedrunner extraordinaire and member of a team of anti-establishment runners who all dress like they're on their way to a warehouse rave. An Elysium data grab? You think she's ready? How about you get off my case? The main business of the game is swinging around the so-called City of Glass like an urban Tarzan, exploring the kind of open world for which this whippy traversal is best suited, and only occasionally ruining it by plummeting to a bone-crushing death on the streets below. <laughs> Ugh. But every story needs an antagonist, and in Mirror's Edge, that antagonist is a nebulously evil corporation called Krugersek, part of the even larger conglomerate and run with an iron fist by their CEO, Gabriel Kruger, who you'll recognize from his constant appearances on video screens throughout the game. If you have any information regarding this terrible calamity, you must report it to Krugersek. Failure to do so is a breach of policy and grounds for contract termination. Hmm, dystopian. Now, looking at Kruger in the game, you'd be forgiven for thinking that he doesn't resemble anyone really, just a generic middle-aged rich business guy in a suit so futuristic it doesn't have lapels. However, when the game was first announced, Kruger looked somewhat different. He was younger, with a different haircut and face, and people instantly latched onto the fact that this Kruger looked a lot like the chief executive officer of EA, Andrew Wilson. Who makes Mirror's Edge again? EA! Ah. Maybe it's just a coincidence that developers at EA designed an evil capitalist overlord who looked exactly like their boss. Could happen to anyone, I expect. Anyway, it kind of became a thing, and next thing we knew, Gabriel Kruger had been redesigned and now no longer looked like anyone on EA's board of directors. I should have recognized you for the first time we met. Which was probably a totally voluntary decision on the behalf of the development team, I expect. As I suspected, what do you hope to accomplish here? I'm giving people the right to decide things for themselves. We have 18 hours. 18 hours until the Ark is sealed and ready for delivery. Oi, Richter! Leave the corpses alone, you sick bastard. We've got a job to do, eh? We make corpses, we don't clean them up. Despite its marketing, Titanfall 2 is basically a touching love story between your character, Jack Cooper, and his best friend, the enormous killer robot, BT-7274. That said, there are a number of elaborately accented villains in Titanfall looking to ruin you and BT's good bonding time, including the extremely German Apex Predator Lieutenant Richter. We first see Richter cutting the ears off a dead body to keep as war trophies, so not a great first impression. But after hearing him speak, it's pretty clear who developer Respawn were going for with this character. And that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, ja, here's Richter. Sure, Richter is German and not Austrian, but the accent is a dead giveaway. Let's begin. At one point, he screams at his men to get to the beacon in a manner very reminiscent of Arnold's similar line about choppers in Predator. All security units, this is Richter. Get to the beacon now. And the achievement you get for finally beating him in a boss battle is called See You at the Party, which is a direct Arnold quote from the movie Total Recall after Michael Ironside's arms come off. No idea if Richter had plans to move into politics after his days as an apex predator, but I guess that's sort of by the by now. Bug SWAT? It's really subtle. That is Jordan Cross, revered and reviled in equal measures. 
being a game called Hitman, about a Hitman, Hitman requires a steady supply of victims for Agent 47 to bump off, or hit in the parlance of professional assassins. These victims range from politicians to scientists to drug lords and even a few real people, such as Sean Bean or Gary Boosie, okay? You'll never find me! I have the power of invisibility! But there are also more than a few Hitman targets that are based on real people, such as the corrupt Italian politician based on Silvio Berlusconi, the pop idol based on Justin Bieber, and most obviously of all to our eyes, the troubled rock star based on Hollywood actor and musician Jared Leto. Uh, who's repping it? Small agency. Very low profile. You wouldn't have heard of them. <laughs> Old buddies from school, huh? Don't have the heart to let them go? <laughs> Yeah, thought so. This is Jordan Cross, one of the two targets on Hitman 2's Bangkok set mission called Club 27. Agent 47 has been contracted to kill Cross by the parents of Cross's ex-girlfriend, who he killed during an argument. They don't specify how they want him killed, but I feel like the subtext to the request was please suffocate him in his own birthday cake. <laughs> customer is always right. Although Cross is clearly a fictional character, I think it's also clear that a great deal of inspiration was taken from cinema's seventh best Joker. There's the look, for a start, with Cross having Leto's trademark hair, beard, and love of flamboyant clothes. Do I know you? Oh hey, you're Quentin's replacement, right? Abel De Silva. Thanks for coming out, Abe. Then there's the fact that he's the lead singer of the band The Class, much like Leto is the singer in the band 30 Seconds to Mars. The Class's drummer is better though. Yeah. Also, Cross and Leto are both vegan as they go to great pains to let people know. Oh, vegan, huh? All right. You guys went through a lot of trouble, huh? Is the lethal poison that the ICA supplies us with vegan? Do we know? Can we get someone to check on that? I don't feel so good. You know, it's something. Something's not. I think, I think, I think the cake. Um. Okay. <coughs> thanks for doing this, guys. But why don't we give Jordan a little bit of space now? Okay. In DMC Devil May Cry, the citizens of Limbo City are all glued to one channel. Namely, Raptor News, which is a demon-controlled media outlet and paper-thin parody of the US Fox News Network, dedicated to slandering hero Dante and labeling him and his friends as terrorists. And is not a news channel focused entirely on raptors. Disappointingly. Remember his face, people. If you see him, inform the police immediately, but do not approach him. The channel is hosted by one Bob Barbas, a sinister demon news commentator who is also the owner of the entire Raptor News Network, which presumably explains why nobody is able to tell him he shouldn't be allowed on TV with a haircut this atrocious. Bob is also, as if you hadn't guessed, a fairly on-the-nose parody of disgraced ex-Fox News anchor Bill O'Reilly, former host of the show The O'Reilly Factor, who didn't return to the network in 2017 amid public reporting on the tens of millions of dollars he paid to settle the sexual harassment claims of six women. There are a few differences. For example, I don't think Bill O'Reilly was able to force people to traverse a giant floating version of the Fox News logo or transform into a big floating head and fire beams of digital energy at people. Although it might explain how he lasted so long at Fox. But hey, at least the two share a catchphrase, as we see in this echo of O'Reilly's famous We'll Do It Live rant. To be honest, I've never watched Fox News. This might be what it's like, for all I know. Being a real-life basketball player, the place you'd expect to find Dennis Rodman in video games is pulling off outrageous dunks in NBA hang time. Right. Oh, up. Is this what sport would be like if they allowed all the performance-enhancing drugs? Because I gotta say, I don't hate it. 
Where you might not expect Dennis Rodman to crop up is in a Japanese one-on-one -on -one arcade fighting game. You'd be forgiven for doing an enormous cartoon double take when you first spot Muay Thai kickboxer Zack in the original Dead or Alive, who is the spitting image of Rodman. Specifically, Zack is apparently inspired by Rodman's appearance in Jean-Claude Van Damme action movie Double Team, where he played flamboyant arms dealer Yaz. Can you fly a plane? Like a bird? A bird would be awful at flying a plane. No thumbs. Perhaps under advice from lawyers, Zack's facial features were made to look less similar to Rodman's in Dead or Alive 2 than in the first game. Instead, he adopted the basketball player's most recognisable and marketable look, that bright green hair. <laughs> Also handy if he ever needs to be rescued from a snowy mountainside. While it might be a stretch to describe Zack as a true villain, he does have a habit of tricking women to come to his private bikini island under the pretense of a fighting tournament, which seems deeply skeezy to us. Either way, if there was still any shadow of a doubt that Zack was supposed to be Dennis Rodman, it was dismissed entirely when, in Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, developer Tecmo hired Rodman himself to voice Zack in this intro scene, which starts off like Titanic and ends with him flying off using a nuclear-powered jetpack. That is my island. Say what? Later, baby. I'm out of here, honey. So that's how he's pulling off those dunks. Why, Sugar? He's the maximum utmost. If it weren't for Mr. House, we wouldn't have this fabulous wonderland of New Vegas, would we? Well, of course I am, silly. Mr. House is just the smartest, most wonderful man there ever was. For someone who made their fortunes from a cartoon mouse, there sure are a lot of video game villains arguably based on Walt Disney. From Portal 2's Cave Johnson, to Joey Drew from Bendy and the Ink Machine, to Bioshock's Andrew Ryan, these alt Disneys make for compelling villains due to their overarching ambition and sometimes weird little moustaches. A man chooses. A slave obeys. Chief among these Disney doppelgangers, however, is Fallout New Vegas's Mr. Robert House, the proprietor of the New Vegas Strip, who looks a lot like good old Uncle Walt, as you will realise when you see him on his casino's video screens when he wants to talk to you. And he wants to talk to you a lot. This meeting has been a long time coming, hasn't it? You've come a long ways, literally, and I suspect figuratively as well. That's because even though Mr. House is in charge of an army of automatons that are considerably deadlier than the ones you see on Pirates of the Caribbean, he still needs your help to consolidate his power in the Nevada wasteland. A great deal shall be happening. A cascade of events with you taking a central role. Mr. House is one of the factions you can choose to side with in the game, but if you like, you can decide that you'd do a better job than this ersatz Disney of running his empire. He does of course send his army of automatons after you, but a bit of skillful hacking and you can enter his private control room where you discover that, just like Walt Disney was rumoured to have been, Mr. House has been preserved in suspended animation. Haven't you, Mr. House? He probably can't hear me. Let me just get him out of there so he can hear better. Why have you done this? Okay, we've all wanted to run backstage at Disneyland and deactivate Walt's cryopod, but this is why we don't. Rules are there for a reason. Freddy, where's my new walking stick? It's right over here, Mr. Mandrill. A brand new cane, hand carved to the exact specifications of your previous stick. It better be, or I'll buy up your putrid little shop and replace it with something useful, like a public urinal. The usual villain in the Monkey Island games is the ghost-slash-zombie-slash-demon pirate LeChuck, which, I mean, I get it, look at him. With its unholy power, I'll make the seas run red with the blood of my enemies. For the fourth game in the series, Escape from Monkey Island, however, LeChuck was merely the terrifying, beardy public face of the game's main evildoers, with the real power belonging to the actual villain of the piece, Ozymandrill. Who are you? What are you doing in my house? 
Aussie is an Australian tycoon who has swept into the Caribbean, buying up all the local businesses and seeking to impose his own anti-pirate views on the area. That junk, as you call it, may very well be the key to ridding these islands of pirates once and for all. He's even the power behind the throne of a corrupt politician who only got into power thanks to Aussie's machinations, the oleaginous gubernatorial candidate Charles L. Charles, who is so obviously the Chuck in disguise that I can't even muster up a pretend shocked face at this reveal. Why, only the biggest lie of them. The Chuck! The Chuck! At your service. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Ozzy is, as I think it's clear, based on media tycoon Rupert Murdoch, from his demeanour, to his business practices, to his extreme Australianness. Ozzy Mandrill is a businessman, a capitalist, a real estate developer. I'm also the future king of the Caribbean. Which proves to be advantageous in the insult fighting world of Monkey Island, because his Australian insults are so totally incomprehensible that no one is able to counter them. Oh, of course he knows, you sloth-brained pile of kookaburra droppings. This, I presume, is also how Rupert Murdoch rose to the top of the business world. Sounds right. Now, by the power of the ultimate insult, I hereby banish those chaotic tempests and usher in a new age of orderly consumerism. Jane, how do you respond to the rumours that Dr. Neocortex from uh, Crash Bandicoot is based <laughs> heavily on you and your scientific experiments? It's all true. I take royalties. Every time someone buys a Crash Bandicoot, uh, I get uh, oh yeah, I get I get points off the back end that's because how you it's that Ferrari. inspired by me, Jane, the greatest villain of all but the hero of this piece which we thank you for watching uh, if you'd like to watch another video from outside xbox then may i personally recommend you this one which is about the unsolved mysteries that still to this day keep us up at night and then there's this video if you'd like something from our friends over at outside extra which is about the seven tragedies you couldn't prevent because you happened to be behind glass at the time um, so check one of those two out and we'll see you next time this time next week for more on outside xbox thank you for watching Stop her, but I'm behind glass. <laughs>